Banana Festival, and you're wondering why in landlocked Fulton, Kentucky, do we have a banana festival? Well, Fulton's a small town in uh, southwestern Kentucky. We like to call ourselves the Twin Cities because South Fulton and Fulton are together here on the border. This is a great place to grow up, and it's a great community, and there are some of the best people on earth here. The town of Fulton is, is a small town, but it has that, it's of course, the small town feel, and um, people are just loving and consider other people as family. Fulton was called the banana capital of the world because uh, about 70% and sometimes as high as 90% of all the ban bananas coming out of South America uh, came through uh, Fulton and South Fulton. Fulton is here because of the Illinois Central Railroad. When it came to the freight side of the railroad, um, railroads would haul a lot of things, but Illinois Central, because it had a direct line between Chicago and New Orleans, was the market, major market player in the transportation of bananas. Bananas grown in South America would be loaded on um, boats, brought to this port of New Orleans, um, where they would be uh, cross-loaded onto trains. Um, they would be iced down in New Orleans in the warm months to keep the, the fruit to a 58 degrees. Um, they would travel as far north before the temperature started to rise, and they had to stop in Fulton. And Fulton constructed one of the largest ice plants in the world. And so these 100-car banana trains um, were constantly coming through Fulton and being re-iced down before continuing on to Chicago. And they would put ice in order of how many blocks of ice or how many hundred pounds of ice each car would get. And it would be a man fall of ice and push off each block of ice to ice each car separately. And then there would be a board laid from the ice run over to the bunker, and he would push that block of ice over there and chip it up. I can remember as a boy going up and down the railroad tracks and finding green bananas where they had to lift some of them out in order to get some of the ice in. And um, sometimes I'd even pick up some of the ice that got spilled and we'd make homemade ice cream. The first banana festival was uh, organized in 1962. The Banana Festival is a week-long event filled with fun activities for all different ages, um, from sidewalk chalk contests to banana bake-offs, um, pageants, and parades. The highlight of the Banana Festival, I think what gets most people excited, is the Grand Parade. And I think the greatest thing is the excitement is building up for the very end when they have the one-ton banana pudding. It does take several hours to make. And usually we'll have about 30 to 50 people that will help volunteer to, to put it together. You'll have teams of people. You have one table that does nothing but peel bananas, one table that does nothing but slice bananas, and then you have one group that lays pudding in, another one that puts cookies in, and then they continue to put all the layers into it. Right after it's made, it gets put into the freezer and kept there until the next morning. And then right before the parade, it gets pulled out and put on the float. The banana pudding makes its way through the parade. And then at the very end, pulls back around downtown uh, where everybody's already gathered for all the events. And then people will get up and serve it. Usually we'll have maybe one of the banana princesses will help serve. I think Miss America helped serve it years ago. Everybody will like come with even huge containers and ask to be able to take home some for, you know, have it home all week and we just fill them up. So it's, it's really exciting to, to make it. And it used to be a real boiled custard that was put into it. And that was my great, great grandmother's recipe. I still have it. And uh, so that's kind of a personal thing. And I get really excited whenever I think about how um, our family got involved in all of that. But the one-ton banana pudding was my grandfather's idea. And uh, I just wish he was alive still to see uh, that we brought it back. He would be so excited. My father-in-law, W.P. Burnett, he took the family recipe from a banana pudding, worked with it till he got one he liked that he made, and he made a 10-pound banana pudding. And then he multiplied that by 400. 
Uh, and every, every year after that, they, they did that, uh, up until the year of 1987. In 1987, in, in Ontario, Canada, somebody decided they were going to take uh, the record away from Fulton on the one-ton banana pudding, and they were going to make one bigger. And they made one, and they made it in a hot tub. So James O. Bush was the, the chairman of the Banana Festival that year, and he said, well, we're going to clean that back. They made a two-ton banana pudding that one year. <laughs> and he said, I don't know about you folks. We're going to eat ours. I don't know what they're going to do with theirs. Who wouldn't want to eat something out of a hot tub? So anyway, we got, the, we got it back. And then they went back to one-ton banana puddings, because that's a lot of pudding to serve people. You know, the Banana Festival is extremely important to Fulton and South Fulton. It's a time to celebrate. It's a time to remember our history. It's a time to flat ham with our neighbors. It's a time to dance in the streets. It's a time for, for good music and good food. And, and so it's all about a week-long celebration in the fall of each year. But we can extend our hands out to communities and people and tourists who travel to come to Fulton for the Banana Festival. And that's what really creates the magic.